Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to this Zoom section. My name is Huli Ho, a volunteer conducting IT classes in library at Harbour Front. At this moment, we have converted these classes using Zoom online. As Tiffany has said, you can get the details of today's lesson, the notes in my blog. And if you want a soft copy before attending the lesson, you can submit your email address at the bottom right hand corner. There's a word follow, click on it and submit your email address. Now, in the past, we have done quite a lot of topics and all this, the library has did a recording and they extend a copy to me to put into my YouTube channel. So if you go to my blog, you can find the YouTube link of the respective topic and you can have a repeat of the lesson discussed now, today we will try to recap some of the features of uh, photo haiku poems and also maybe a recap of how to add text to the photo. And uh, I will give you three groups of haiku poems, one submitted by two participants in the part one session and some from my previous haiku interest group and also a few from the internet. Now, for those who are first time learning this photo haiku, I would recommend you to go to the internet and view this complete video by NHK uh, on the series of Haiku Master. I will do a short clip to show you what is it. Oh, sorry. Haiku is the shortest form of poetry in the world, with roots dating back over 1,200 years. Photographs capture that one single moment. The two worlds meet to create a new form of visual literature. A beautiful and profound world. Haiku is the world's shortest form of poetry, which captures the subtleties of everyday life in just 17 sounds. A photograph is much the same. It is an art form that also captures the beauty of everyday life. The two working together expands our imagination to an entirely new level. That is the world of photo haiku. Taking a dive, body 
falls faster, dragging the soul behind. You need to be a trained athlete in order to take a dive from an elevated platform. The entire dive may last but a few seconds. The speed is amazing, and so I thought the human soul could never catch up. It is truly remarkable what people can feel and perceive. There are no limits. Okay. So you can see the whole video by searching Google as what I have suggested. So just a clarification, I am not an expert on photo haiku. I'm trained technically. My love for beautiful words and the appreciation on nature, humanity and compassion reinforce my interest in music and literature, especially photo haiku poems. A photo captured the moment in time, the beauty around us. Together with words, it expands our imagination to a new level. A photo can only evoke our sense of sight. With words, we can describe the sensations of sound, smell, touch, taste, and even can evoke our emotion. This one is my view of how we can live a complete uh, life. We need to look after four aspects in our body, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So most of us tend to live in one room most of the time. Unless we go into every room every day, even if only to keep it air, we are not a complete person. So this is the part one explanation of what is the photo haiku poems. And you notice the picture I selected, I just focus on hope and perseverance and I come out with this haiku poem myself waiting patiently without a single complaint for the rain to come. So last session, I explained one of my life experience on how a farmer selling fruits on an expressway. Now, if you look at the same picture and focus on different aspects, you can come out with a different haiku poem. So in this case, I focus on beauty, even in atrocities. So I have two uh, hint down here. One, it, it looks like a desert and even the desert can be converted to a cities. Even the desert can be converted converted to farmlands. And these are real true facts. In China, they have done that. In the Sahara Desert, Saudi Arabia, all this, they have changed them into cities. So with this in mind, I have also created another haiku point. Delicate flower of imagining rise up from my disbelief. So you can write it any way you like. At least when people read it, they understand which aspect of life you are trying to share or trying to explain. It's something like telling a story. So this is one of the past one, just to recap that uh, Doing haiku poems, we, we can learn to think beautiful words. With a photo, we can learn how to edit and put text on it. And uh, by doing so, we have actually visited two rooms, the mental and the spiritual. But if your poem can evoke some emotion, 
it can also touch on the spiritual, uh, the emotional. A photo represents a moment in time captured on paper or on screen where people look at it and can tell a story in that fraction of time. A photo can also express our feelings and emotion, our life experiences through a haiku poem. A photo can't communicate with us in sound, touch, taste, or smell. So we use words to bring out these senses whenever necessary in our photo haiku. So this is my suggestion for those who are starting to learn photo haiku. So we can learn to appreciate all forms of art, like poems, music, or even painting. It may be difficult for some, but if you don't try, you have missed one of the most unique way nature has given us to feel free, relaxed, happy, energetic, and to move our imagination to a new level. With deeper understanding of the beauty of everyday life enhances our emotion, compassion, and humanity through our senses of sight, sound, touch, and smell and taste. Photo haiku adds an extra layer of dimension to the overall meaning of a short poem. These points contain a dominant impression revolving around nature, life, and universal truth to invoke emotion and empathy with the reader. So just to recap how to take a reasonably good picture using the one-third rule. So try to put the subject of your photo within the four black circle and you can come up with a good uh, photo for you to create a photo haiku. So to add text to a photo, there are three ways to do it. One is to download an app called PIXLR app. The other is to use the Microsoft Office, the word program. After that, convert to an image or use the Apple Keynote, similar to Microsoft PowerPoint. Put the picture and insert your text into that slide and convert it to an image. My learning cycle of haiku, photo haiku is uh, this five steps that I mentioned here. I searched the YouTube for this series, uh, NHK Haiku Master, see how they explain how photo haiku is created and how they are interpreted. So pay attention to the words to describe the writer's imagination and feeling. And uh, the library also has uh, quite a good resources, digital books and physical books that we can borrow and uh, expand our knowledge on this uh, haiku point. Now, I will start to share with you some of the participant submission uh, during the last part one session. So once I put out the haiku poems submitted by them, I would like the lady in charge to speak up or share with us how she created that haiku, photo haiku poem. So this one is from Rose Mitch. She submitted, I think, three of them. So I show you all the three, yeah? okay? Three of them. So can we have uh, Rose 
to come on and explain to us a hello. shadow lengthen. Okay. Um, hi, yeah, that one, the, the shadows one, the first one, we were in Norfolk in um, England and the beaches are just flat and very, very empty. And where we were looking, we were looking north and there was just nothing until you get to the North Pole, there's no land in between. And we were sat on the beach, it was getting sort of late afternoon and this couple just walked past and there seemed to be absolutely nowhere to go to, you know, the beach went on for miles and there was nothing to see at the end of it. And so it seemed very, they were very solitary as a couple, that's how we felt. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they were presumably going home somewhere because it was getting to late afternoon. And it just struck me as a, a little, nice little moment in time mm -hmm. capturing these people sort of wandering off and we didn't know anything about them or where they were going and there was no way to actually yes. even think about it. Good. The second one? The second one, that one was taken in um, Kew Gardens in London. There was, um, have you heard of the Chihuly, the American guy that mm. does all the big glass works? And there was an exhibition of all his blown glass and things in there. And that was like um, great big balls. They were probably about half a metre in diameter. Mm. They had a very reflective glass. And that was a picture of the um, roof of the palm house reflected in the glass. And it just struck me as sort of almost like infinity. You could sort of go round and round. And, mm. It was lovely the way you could see everything curving round and coming back to itself, really. Yeah, good. Thank you. What about that, that one? The third one was taken in uh, Kyoto in um, the Fushimi Inari Shrine, where you have thousands and thousands of these red torii gates were snaking their way up the, to the top of the mountain. And we walked that path for hours and didn't manage to find the top of the mountain it just seems mm. you can take different routes but and so you know it was sunny day and there was all the shadows and we were sort of put into the unknown because it kept going around corners and you you didn't know what you were going to find and sometimes you came upon a little shrine where people had lit little candles mm. and there was because it's a shrine to the fox god there was lots of little foxes you sort of turn a corner and there is loads of little fox statues yeah. Yeah. it was just magical absolutely lovely yeah thank you rose so you notice uh, i have put a complimentary uh, photo haiku also but i yeah. look at it at a different angle like for yeah. example this uh, uh couple walking through uh wilderness uh, i yes. i use the sense of uh, direction because in this uh, location your mobile phone will not work unless you have a sat satellite phone. So between them, they need to trust something. So I think of the element, you know, the five element. So you, you have the element of the, the earth. Then here, what I say is the vast wilderness with no sense of direction. You have to trust the stars above. I think my yeah. story is wrong. So yes, I can see. I can see exactly where you're coming from with that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, so so you notice a photo haiku can can have different interpretation depends on individual upbringing and lifestyle. Yes. So, so it's very wonderful that if we have more people get engaged with your photo, we can have. You can say a, a variety of lifestyle that is presented in front of us. So unfortunately, only you and me are talking. So, <laughs> so if there are more people get engaged, it is very wonderful this session, I tell you. So I will talk less on technical. I, I can get more people to, to uh, contribute on this uh, 17 syllabus. So that yeah. is one, one example of it. So the second example, I'm thinking of when you have a band, uh, it's always some mystery in front of, you don't know what will happen. It's something like you go to a journey with a fog, uh, either turn right or turn left. Uh, you always think that what if I make a mistake and choose the wrong direction? Yes. So here, 
when I see this red pole, uh, it's always something to deal with religion. That is how I see it. So when you deal with religion, one of the key words I think about is humanity. So yeah. here I say every step we make into the winding journey, everyone is going through our life journey. What are we searching? We are searching for humanity. Yes. Searching for gold. You may say searching for money, but that is another lifestyle. But you, you, if you are a very passionate person, uh, artistic person, you are not thinking of money. You are thinking of something to impress somebody. So the mystery is there. So that is how I come up with this word. Yeah. That, yeah. that one of yours actually is much closer to mine than the previous one, I think. Yeah. With the idea of not knowing what's around the corner. Yes. Yes. Good. So thank you for it. I thank hope you. you can submit more when I have another session on this. Thank you, oh, yeah. Rose. Yeah. Okay, we go to the next participant. Okay, this one is by Mary Sia. Are you around? Mary Sia? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Um, this was, I live in Scotland on the coast in Fife, and I'm always. Uh, walking the beach has kept me very sane during these uh, lockdown restrictions and one day I was walking along and all the as the tide goes out you get these lovely shapes on the sand but one day they were covered in black and where I live the Firth of Forth used to be a, a big mining area coal mining under the Forth so the coal dust and sea coal sometimes comes up onto the beach so that's why I, I felt like the image was feathery and fragile because it was going to disappear very soon because mm. of the nature of the tide, but also the disappearing world. I was kind of um, thinking about the industry that has disappeared from that area of Fife as well. Are you thinking how fragile, how fragile is our earth? Yeah. Yeah, good. Yes. So you notice I, I have a complimentary uh, point, uh, maybe looking slightly at a different angle. So I'm not sure how close mine is uh, compared to yours in the same thought. The veins of the tide networking into a maze, is there a message? So we are, we are trying to interpret what nature is trying to tell us. It is it, something like in the seasonal, uh, in those temperate countries, uh, the people who live in that region, uh, they roughly know when winter is coming. They roughly know when winter will start just by their body feeling of the wind and temperature. I think animals also have that skill. So, so it was here, like, um, yeah, it was, it, it is like messages on the beach, you're right. Yes, yes. So, and so, it is a very, the, you know, the world never looks the same every time I walk the beach, it's yeah. different. So it is yeah. all that changing and so, a different world. Yeah, the veins can come in different pattern or, or different shape. So if, if you live then in that area long enough, you, you, you may experience different seasonal change and all that. And sometimes, you can actually predict what will come after you see that uh, message from nature. So, yeah. Yeah. So that is how I come up with this uh, ha a photo haiku point, just based on the images that is uh, in front of me. Yeah. That's good. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you, Marysia. Okay. <laughs> now we go to the next one. Okay. These are from my past members, interest group members on haiku interest. So I like the first one by Mei Ling. I think she is a teacher, if I'm not wrong, a retired teacher. Can we catch our dreams and keep them in a bottle? Yes, it is a dream. So we hope something will happen, but in reality, it is just a dream. So it's very meaningful, depends on what aspect or what occasion you want to think of this uh, poem. 
you may be think of it after you make a mistake or you may think of it after you are successful the first time it depends on how you context this uh, point so the next one also by mailing now whatever i said now uh, if you have some questions uh, please share with us after the, the q and a uh, during the q and a old and young can't talk the generation gap lives we do not speak now it depends on how you apply this point you can apply to it in our current context we call it the strawberry generation the z generation the baby boomer so it depends on how you want to context this poem so it has many interpretation and many meaning this by esther lim sunrise seen afar smell of the sea refreshes awaken my soul out of the out at sea till dusk tired after a hard work quickly they rush home so this is by two other ladies now i have searched the internet i find a few meaningful one uh, i'm not sure where they are professional or, or just like people like us who are interested in composite but uh, they are quite meaningful on a frozen twig the little bird dreams of spring oh to see the sun brush again the tight sense of time roll forward foam laces our feet so we need time to think deeply and try to interpret what the creator has done and what the creator is trying to tell us in their own respective story all these are i think is in the blog you can take your time to refresh and and uh, try to think of your own interpretation this one i like i close my eyes and try to imagine all the impossible things now there are a few guideline i would like to share with you unless this photo is uh uh what what should i say uh at edited if it is not if the real picture then this lady has actually climb up this mountain so is a uh, consider a, a big success that she has achieved but she still think of more of things that she consider impossible so it depends on how you interpret this picture with the words so here to sum it up i just say we are talking about element of hope every one of like every one of us like to hope to do better in our life in whatever sense either in health or in a uh, career or not to get into trouble live a peaceful life make sure our country is peaceful our neighbors are also peaceful so everybody will live a relaxed life so is the element of hope to some country it may be impossible because they are fighting all the time so it depends on what context and what location you are explaining this uh, photo haiku point this is also one of my favorite the words are created by me the picture also by me no sorry the picture is taken from the internet only the words are by me love is a journey long difficult full of pain but once found worth it so i try to complement this picture with the words 
So you notice the stone is actually a journey, step by step. You progress in your life journey and depends on what achievement or what hope you want to see at the end of the journey. And here we are talking about love, how we find love, how we preserve love. So true love is worth it. Now, I have a Harborfront community group. It's a close group. Uh, here we mainly focus on IT, but sometimes I do post some other thing that is uh, related to life. So anybody interested can join. Now I have, uh, I think 120, 129 members. So to join, fine for this group, but please introduce yourself. If not, it won't be accepted. So these are the things I wish to know about you. <coughs> Most important is a mobile number so that I can do a feedback check whether you are a real person or a pseudo person. These are some of the books I read through. It's good. I recommend you to go to library and borrow. I think you can, these are digital books. You can borrow uh, using the overdrive. Okay, Tiffany, back to you for Q&A.